We all know the importance of how we represent ourselves. The things we say and the things we do influence the people around us. It's all about the message we are sending, including the things that we wear. Christians can be more aware of the messages we bring to others in their clothing with Covenant Press. Covenant Press is a faith-based Christian apparel and accessory store that is fearfully and wonderfully made. If you want to wear the message of Christ and Christianity, then go to their website at covenant-press.com. That's www.covenant-press.com. For the next 24 hours, you will get 25% off the purchase of $50 or more using the discount code GROWTH at checkout. Sign up and become a member to receive points for future purchases. Again, that's covenant-press.com, www.covenant-press.com to get 25% off your purchase of $50 or more using discount code GROWTH at checkout. Tell your friends and family about covenant-press.com so we can all share the message. Welcome to Laquita's Toolbox, where we deliver relevant content in the form of tools that empower entrepreneurs to elevate personally and professionally. Good is only good until greater is envisioned. You know there's another level in you. Here we discuss the tools to get you there. Lean in as Laquita and her guests present you with strategies and insight for unlocking your full potential to realize your boldest dream. Hey, Laquita's Toolbox audience. Welcome back to another amazing episode of Laquita's Toolbox. I am your host, Laquita Monley, and I am absolutely excited about the guest that we have in the studio today, Miss Nikki Shepard. She is an absolute awesome entrepreneur, and I cannot wait to hear some of the tips, tools, and strategies that she's going to share with us today. So you guys know, get something to write with and something to write on because you don't want to miss these nuggets. But if you're in the car and you're listening, no worries. Replay is always available to go back and download this episode of Laquita's Toolbox and listen to it as many times as possible. And uh, before we dive in, I want to take a moment just to thank our sponsors of today's episode of Laquita's Toolbox. And our sponsors are Covenant Press. Uh, Covenant Press is a faith-based Christian apparel and accessory shop where we can, as believers, we can shop online for clothing, accessories, and um apparel that allows us to wear the message of the love of Jesus Christ. So you want to check them out at www.covenant-press.com. And while you're browsing the website and shopping, don't forget to look at those little pop-ups. Don't click them away so quick. Look at those pop-ups because they always provide some amazing discount codes that you can use at the checkout to receive amazing savings on your purchases. So we just want to thank Covenant Press for their continued partnership with Laquita's Toolbox. So listen, Nikki, let's just jump right in to this great conversation. I'd like to start off by letting you introduce yourself to those in the Laquita's uh, Toolbox audience that might not know who you are. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad and honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Nicole Shepard. I also go by Nikki. And um, I am a psychotherapist. I have had my license since 2010. And working in the spaces of helping uh, clients with grief, anxiety, stress, PTSD, you name it. And uh, but my love, my baby right now is just working with clients that are in, you know, in trouble, in crisis with regard to their relationships. So I've kind of pivoted a little bit. I do some life coaching um, in that area and focus on helping individuals that are either going into a relationship in a relationship or coming out of a relationship and helping them have those essential tools that are necessary to be able to navigate those spaces and and have the best uh, experiences as they grow to love people. (laughs) (laughs) Love and out of love with people. (laughs) Right, right, right. 
So we can take this conversation in a number of different ways. We might have to get this down to an episode one, two, and three. Because <laughs> there's a lot that I have, you know, personally, I am um, a mother of three children, beautiful children. My son is 22 and I have twin daughters that are 20. And, um, you know, it's just personal for me, you know, helping clients in this area because I was uh, with their dad for a very long time. We were married for 20 years together for about 25 and, um, you know, we didn't end up making it. We ended up having a divorce and, and, you know, I know I've learned a lot. I mean, I feel like in 20 years, you learn a lot, a lot of what to do and a lot of what not to do. <laughs> Every Definitely. Yeah. In terms of, you know, how you show up in the relationship. So I feel that, you know, instead of keeping all this knowledge within me on top of everything that I've learned in my trainings and my, my degrees, you know, why not share with the world? Because, you know, relationships is what is, you know, what connects us all. And, you know, I think it's important. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, one of one of the things that we I, I have not had an opportunity to talk a lot about and really want to change that um, moving forward is the importance of healthy relationships and how to maintain those healthy relationships as entrepreneurs. It, because I didn't know that. Coming mm-hmm. into the entrepreneurial journey, I, I didn't, I had no idea. And funny, but not funny. One of my best friends stepped out of her career and into entrepreneurship in 2012. And we were super excited for them. But then some things began to shift and change. And I was like, you know, I was asking her, like, what's going on? What's different? You know, like, because from the outside looking in, entrepreneurship looks sexy and, you know, you're the power of it, right? Doesn't it, though? You know, it, looks so, it looks so sexy, right? <laughs> it's like, you're the, you know, you're the power couple, like, you know, um, you know, strong Black family and you guys are moving in the direction and building things together. So, you know, what's all this sad? Right. And you could not quite put it into words. Hmm. And I didn't understand it. Of course, we were there to support them. But again, on the outside looking in, and we started our entrepreneurship journey in 2017. And uh, she came over because at that time, she lived in, when she started hers, I lived in Germany, she lived in England. But by the time we started our journey, we had moved back here to the States. And she was still living in England because they are local nationals, like England is their home country. We were just we met in England because my husband was stationed there. But you know, they came to visit and I looked at her and I was like, You why you didn't tell me? <laughs> why did no, you not no, tell no, me? No. <laughs> yes, and she laughed and she's like, you know, words just can't express sometimes because you just be like, Really? Is mm-hmm. this really how this is going on? And so that was the start of me trying to discover how in the world do we build business and yet maintain a healthy relationship and not let those roles as husband and wife conflict with the positions that we hold in the company? Like, mm-hmm. how do you do that? How do you yeah. maintain that? Right. Did you figure it out yet? <laughs> no, girl, we're a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're still, everybody's still, you know, trying to figure it out. But that's so funny you mentioned that because I put as, I have a book that I'm coming out with and it talks about the essentials of having an effective relationship and, you know, for couples. And one of the things I put in there, one of the essentials is career support, you know, career support, no matter if it's, you know, you're working for somebody else or you're working for yourself. And then the transitions that come with that, the ebbs and flows that come with that. Sometimes we're not prepared for that, you know, because not only is it a transition for the individual, it's also a transition for the household. And for the, you know, the partner to the spouse to be able to to come to grips. Okay, what are we doing now? How is this going to affect our income again? <laughs> Where's the 401k going? <laughs> like, yes. like, well, uh, <laughs> my plan was, I don't have it yet, but. <laughs> right. It's like I'm moving like as, as because my, for us, my husband is an Intel analyst, so he's very structured. Okay. I am not. <laughs> Isn't that probably how opposites attract? <laughs> yes. You know, that's a great conversation too, right? Like, we cannot yeah. be further apart <laughs> in personality types. <laughs> what is that book at? Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Venus something like that. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> we are. 
that our personality differences did play a major role in some of the conflicts. Like we would want the same end goal, but the approach to get there was different. And so that created some bumps. Mm -hmm. And again, the one of the things that we noticed was the traditional roles that we played within our marriage. When our positions in the company conflicted with those traditional roles that we played in that we held in the marriage, that was another um, hill to climb, if you will. Like that was another one of life speed bumps that I, we had to slow down, figure it out and roll over it. And I think that because we did have a healthy relationship going in, that is one of the reasons that we're still together and still able to build business. But I guess I would love, love to you to speak, love for you to speak about the necessities of having a healthy uh, relationship as it relates to building business. Like, do you recommend people who are in conflict in their relationship to go in business together? No. <laughs> <laughs> not, not until some of those, those issues are resolved. You know, if they have a passion that is in alignment and they feel that, you know, that's what's best for their, their family, then yes. It's not that it's not possible. It's that that they may need a little tune up prior to and get, you know, fully engaging in it does not mean that you can't take the time to plan it, write it out. You know, what's the Bible say? Make the vision, write the vision, make it plain so that whoever sees it, reads it, can run with it. So I do think that there's purpose in actually mapping out what it is that you both want. Um, I teach a lot, counsel a lot about um, and coach a lot about balance. And both parties being able to feel that they have some, you know, some type of compromise or some type of ownership in what that vision is for their their family and for their business. So I would say that tune up may be going to a relationship coach. But if there's like deeper wounds within the relationship, then you definitely want to reach out to a counselor and see if you can get the help, you know, prior to or maybe simultaneously at the same time. You don't have to stop. You know, you can just do it, at, you know, at the same time. But. It's definitely necessary because, um, you know, sometimes later on you may get triggered, either one or both. And those triggers will lead you back, you know, to where you first started, which is, is probably not a good space. Because sometimes we put a band aid on our issues and, you know, things that come up in our relationships and even within ourselves. And it's fine. You know, we can go on about life. You know, we're real good about that. Humans, we're, we're resilient, right? And I love that about us. But then I also know that sometimes those triggers, um, they just come at the wrong time. <laughs> and then that's when, you know, excuse my language, all hell breaks loose. So you just have to kind of go backwards and try to figure out what it is. How, how were you broken in the first place? Sometimes that comes through, you know, looking at your childhood and, you know, like you said, gender roles. You know, um, when we are growing up in our homes, there are there's some conditioning that happens naturally. You're seeing, you know, even our children are seeing how, okay, the man's role is this, the woman's role is this, this is how I'm going to be. They, you know, maybe identify with whatever gender they are or feel that they want to be and, um, you know, start thinking in their mind, you know, when I get older, when I have my own family, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to act. So we have to be really sensitive to what we're showing them also. Um when it comes to raising our, our children. But, you know, I think it's great. I think, you know, if you can work through some of the kinks and, you know, come to agreement or compromise on many of the things in respect to business and opening a business together, I think it's a beautiful thing. Really, honestly, raising children in a household, you're running a business anyway, you know? <laughs> sure. Uh, I mean, it, it's, you know? <laughs> it's a whole organization. <laughs> yes, yes. yes it is. So you already know it's, you've had some successes and some, you know, not great experiences raising children because maybe you don't agree on everything and maybe mm -hmm. there is more give and take and maybe one person does get their way more than the other. So if you know that you can do that and you're able, you know, the house is not burning down and <laughs> everybody's eating most of the time, <laughs> eat every once in a while, then, right. then you, perhaps you can have a business together too. It's just, you know, don't ignore the issues that could cause you more trouble than good later on. That's real good. That's real good. So, so with that being said, like what I hear you saying is making sure that we pay attention to our relationship, acknowledge the areas where we're having issues, acknowledge right. it and actively work on repairing it. Right. right. Um, and if we can get that done prior to opening the business, great. If not, definitely make that a priority 
and doing as we're building, the, opening the business and building the business, making sure that we still take that time and that priority to build a healthy relationship. Absolutely. And in addition to that, it just came to my mind that taking time to unplug together, mm. you know, remembering, recalling what, why, what connected you guys in the first place? You know, I love to, even when couples are, you know, maybe their relationship didn't work out or they're coming out of a relationship, I ask them, but why did that person come to, to, into your life? Period. That's a good you question. Know? So then they're reflecting on that. It's like, oh yeah, well maybe because of this. And, and not only that, why did they come into your life at that particular time? Mm. You know, there was purpose in that, you know, and so we can just learn to be grateful for that, even if the relationship doesn't make it. If we can learn to be grateful for that, even if it does, then that keeps us plugged in. To, yeah, I mean, this person came into my life when I needed exactly him or her to show up and showed up in such a powerful way that I felt I wanted to do life with this person for whatever season it was, a week, a month, a year, 10 years, 20 years, that there was something so magnetic at that moment that it caused us to partner together and do this thing t- called life. So if that's the case, then there's, you know, let's explore that then. Let's continue to stay connected to that. Even when we are arguing, even when, you know, he didn't do his laundry, even when she, you know, <laughs> she didn't cook your meal when she got home. It wasn't, <laughs> she, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she didn't turn in the LLC paperwork, you know, <laughs> like, oh yeah, why did I meet him at that time again? <laughs> You know, and then date night and, you know, spending time together, not neglecting the intimacy, you know, that you can have together that's so purposeful in a relationship. Um, you know, not holding grudges and, oh, well, he has the majority of the problems, so I'm just going to wait until he gets himself together because I'm good. You know, mm-hmm. no, you have something, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, just because we go to the gym and our body's fine doesn't mean we don't still need to tone, you know? Right. Come on now, say that. <laughs> we still, because a few days go by, we're going to start seeing the cellulite again, you know. <laughs> so, you know I like to kind of incorporate everything. It's like, oh yeah, this kind of plays into that. It plays mm-hmm. into exercise and all of that. So, so oh, yeah, I, I think that it's so important that we, we get so busy doing mm-hmm. and, you know, the grind and making money and the, you know, and entrepreneurship is not easy, but it's mm-hmm. so exciting at the same time, you yes. know. Because you know that what you're doing is bigger than you. You know mm-hmm. that it's not just about the money. You know that you are going to be walking into what it is that God has called you to do and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and the people that you're going to help. So, um, and that's exciting. You know, the money part's exciting too, but just if you have a partner, a spouse, you know, somebody you're in a relationship with and you're doing it with them, that's even better. You know, yes, yes, the absolutely. You can impact, you know, it's, it's powerful. It is, so, it is. And maintaining that healthy relationship is as absolutely important, absolutely important because the business can grow. Right. And you can make a lot of money while the relationship is yet failing. Right. What are some of the things that you would say that as couples we should look for as red flags to say, hey, stop and do a post check in your relationship? You know, this is pay attention to these things and and making sure that I guess uh, because you mentioned like date night and taking that time out with each other. What are some things that we should be making sure that is always in the forefront of our mind with maintaining uh, a healthy relationship? As we're building, as whether we're building the business or not, just because one spouse can be the entrepreneur while the other spouse is still a W-2 earner, but you still need to have a healthy relationship in order um, to be successful at which, you know, whatever you're doing. Right. Two things that I always preach, teach, coach and counsel is that you cannot, and this is my opinion, you know, you cannot have a healthy, effective relationship without communication. Mm. It has to be assertive communication and assertive mm-hmm. communication is you are considering your wants and needs and you're also considering the wants and needs of the person you're working with, whether that's your spouse or your family member or your friend or what have you. It's you're going in with them in mind and also yourself. How can we both get our needs and wants met? And so a lot of times communication, if you notice that your communication is falling off or maybe your communication isn't good to begin with, 
you know, there's passive communication, there's aggressive communication, there's passive aggressive communication and assertive. So passive communication is you're keeping everything in and you're not really, you know, you're probably putting the person before yourself and, you know, what they want in regards to the business, what they want in regards to the relationship, how they think the household should be run, how they think that, you know, the children should be raised. It's all about them. And you're giving in, but you're not using your voice to say, no, 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 I don't, I don't want that. <laughs> you know, I don't like that. And, um, but sometimes where passive aggressiveness shows up is that, you know, you do that for a month, you do that for five years, you do that for 10 years, but one day, however it plays out, you wake up and you say, no, I, I'm, I'm tired of doing it your way. You know, now I want to have a voice and I want to speak to what it is that I want. And I, I see a different way and I see that, you know, I haven't been vocal about it. And so then, you know, you see that that's happening and you're not really, you know, when you're sitting with yourself, you know that there's things that need to be said, but you're not saying it because of maybe fear, because of rejection, because of, you know, that they may have a problem with it. It may start a conflict. Then you're not being your true self in that relationship and in that business. And so you're going to have to muster up that energy and that strength and confidence to go ahead and share your truth with the risk of them not liking it. And that's okay because assertive communication is you're considering your wants and needs and theirs too. So if you're only considering their wants and needs, then that's not assertive communication. That's passive communication. And then when you eventually get mad about it, because you will, <laughs> I don't know what year, what month, what day, <laughs> or the time, you get tired and then that's going to be a problem, you know, and that's why a lot of people end up in divorce court, you know, and they end up having relationships that sever because they get tired of mm. holding the hand or they get tired of expressing themselves and the other person on the other end is not receptive to what it is that they have to say or even consider it of their opinion inversion or vision of what is happening. So, you know, you have to communicate and alongside with that is compromise. You have to have that ability to go into every single situation Anything that you guys have to decide on, how can we compromise? How can we both get a little bit of what we want and we see that needs to happen here? Because sometimes you guys will be in alignment. You both will see things exactly the same way, but mm. then sometimes it will not be that way. So I don't see that a relationship can be as effective um, or as healthy without mm -hmm. having that, that communication piece there. And then also being able to compromise and look at things from like a team mentality not really being negative about the mistakes that may be made. You know, somebody may decide, okay, I want it to be my way this way. Okay, I'm going to compromise and let you, you you know, you basically tell us what to do in regard to the business and what decision needs to be made. Because, you know, maybe you have more experience or you're the man in the household or, you know, what have you. Well, sometimes those mistakes happen. <laughs> it backfires. Not necessarily because of their fault, but it's not, the woman's place in that moment or the partner's place in that moment to say, I told you so and right. look at what, what happened. And now we're, you know, and just beat them up against the head about it. It's like, okay, okay it's a team approach, right? So what do we go? If we're on the football field. If we're on the basketball court, you know, there's mistakes that are made. Man, I wish you wouldn't have done that. I wish you would have, you know, did this play. I wish you would remember to do this, but I'm going to pull, let's pull back. Let's mm -hmm. regroup. Let's put our thinking caps on. Let's cuddle. And let's say, okay, what are we doing? What are we going to do next? That didn't work. That <laughs> was a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of tears. Yeah. I'm fine now. But <laughs> but say, I'm, I'm smiling because um, that happened. Well, I mean, that's happened a lot in our relationship because we've been together since Jesus was a baby. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, girl. I mean, we've been together over 30 years. We've been together since 1992. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. And so we, we run the gamut. <laughs> yeah. you, should be on, you should be telling me. What? <laughs> I don't know. Let's... No. But you were saying that and, I, and it just brought to mind uh, a situation where when we first became real estate investors, we were trying to, you know, step into that space. And my husband said, okay, this is your assignment. He was going to Iraq. Initial invasion of Baghdad. This was in 2003. Okay. While I'm gone, he would, bought this course. My assignment was to study the course and make it happen. Long story short, I studied the material. I got the first investment property. My husband was gone for a year. 
he came back and within two weeks of him coming home from Iraq, we were homeless because I lost the property. He had left all the responsibility to me to get it done. He trusted me like he deferred to me in this situation. And here I was. Yeah, I did. What it happened was. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting there looking at me like, this is what? <laughs> all our money is gone. I can laugh about it now. Could not laugh about it for a very long time. All of our money is gone. We don't have anywhere to live. I just came home from war. And it's like, what do you want me to do with this? And I praise God for him and his response because that could have went a lot of different ways. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the way that it did. And I was, that's like a month. Um, a moment in our life that we talk about now is like a memorial stone because oftentimes when we're having this conversation about people making those decisions is usually, especially within the Christian community, is usually where the man is making all the decisions and the woman is just kind of going along with it. And though right. my, my husband and I do operate in traditional gender roles, we are not radically crazy in that he does not believe that I cannot make a good decision. He absolutely believes and empowers me. Well, I don't even want to say empower because it's like he's allowing. It's like we we partner together instead of, you know, just one person dominating the relationship. But we do embrace our gender roles. Yeah. So in that moment, I learned a lot of things. And I also, the one of the, my biggest takeaways in that, other than the the business aspects of it was, I saw, I experienced how it felt to be the person responsible for making decisions and then the fail. Mm. And now what do I do with the consequences of that decision and how it has impacted my family? And let me tell you what, after that experience, I had no problem saying, okay, what you want to do? Because <laughs> 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 Let, let's talk about it. You know, but he was very encouraging through it all. Was he angry? Yes. Um, but he worked very hard to build my courage again, like okay. to help me. Cause I fell flat, man. I like, I felt we had five kids and I lost everything in a business decision that I had been entrusted with. And so when you were saying that, that does happen a lot in relationships, whether it's business related, relationship related, you know, that ability to make sound financial decisions and is critical. Like in those times, like what are some of the things when you have a couple that's come to you and that type of situation has happened? Like what can that couple do to rebound? Like I know what we did. Yeah. The grace, but you know, (laughs) what the blood of Jesus. The blood, okay. (laughs) Um, well, you know, I see that as a defining moment. You know, it was a defining moment for your relationship and it was either gonna make you or break. You know, you had an opportunity to you know, decide, are we going to come together and figure this thing out? Or is he going to sit across the room and point fingers and, you know, basically make you feel bad and continue to bring it up and all those kind of things. And what, what sometimes happens in relationships is that does occur, right? Where the spouse, because of them, you know, being probably anxious, probably fearful of what's next, fearful of the future and what now, what can we do now? How can we get out of this? How can we get past this? They may point fingers at the spouse that made the decision. And, um, and not really treat them fairly. And I just think introspection is really important. You have to look inward and say, you know, it could have been me, you know, and if I sit here and I'm, you know, basically making her feel bad or making him feel bad about a decision that was made, you know, um, basically with a good heart and good intention, but it didn't go the way that they thought, then what happens when that happens to me? I want them to give me that grace that I'm going to choose because it is a choice. I'm going to choose to show them in this time, in this defining moment for our relationship. And this is not the time to walk away. You know, so many times marriages end right at the pivotal moment of that defining moment. I can even honestly say mine did. At a defining moment, we decided, okay, we both, we're done. We're both tired. And, and I don't think that now we're being removed from the situation. It wasn't the right choice. You know, that's the time where you've got to Put your seatbelt on, you know, you got to, you know, take your, your vitamins and, you know, your mental health vitamins, I call them, you know, you got to double up on everything. You got to exercise, go to the gym, go for a walk, get out in nature. You know, you have to do everything you can individually 
and then collectively as a unit to be able to get past that moment. But you cannot do it without one word, forgiveness, forgiveness. You have to forgive. And three words after that is let it go. Now, Mm. people may be saying, oh, yeah, but you don't understand, you know. It's, you know, it's all our money. We don't know what we're going to do. Now we're, you know, 10 steps backwards and it's her fault. It's his fault. And no, I do understand because there's going to be lots of opportunities in a relationship, even if you weren't in, as a couple in a business partnership where somebody's going to make a mistake because otherwise we'd have all, <laughs> we all be multimillionaires and billionaires. Right? Right. <laughs> there's some things that happen along the way that we're like, oh, couldn't have planned for that one, you know? Um, let me get myself together and let me, let's figure this out. Let's, you know, there's businesses that sometimes don't make it relationships that sometimes don't make it, but you've got to forgive and you have to be willing to let it go. You know, not mm-hmm. holding a grudge, looking at that person with compassion, you know, compassionate lens and remember it's your choice. Sometimes it's a daily choice. I'm going to forgive again. I'm going to forgive again. I'm mad again. Cause that brain will remind you. Oh no. Remember what he did? <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds ago. Yes. <laughs> Remember what he said 25 years ago. <laughs> it's like, why am I still thinking about that? And we have all these blessings. And, you know, and that's the other piece is gratitude. Mm. It's a very powerful tool, too, in those pivotal moments. Um, when you're at your lowest, there's so much. I mean, all you got to do is Google gratitude. And you'll see that there's so much um, research that's been done on the power of being grateful and just like what the Bible says, just remembering and counting our blessings instead of looking at everything that's not going right with our relationship, with our business, with the world, and focusing on those things that have gone right and that are gone right and are going right and just continue to stay plugged into that. You have to keep the positive right at the forefront of your mind. You know, another thing I would say is just managing your thoughts. I really teach a lot and coach a lot about thought management. Mm. I have this little painter stick that I use all the time with my clients. <laughs> and it says past, present, future. And so I told him, I said, and I got it. It's, it's cheap. I got it off his depot. It was free. It's a painter stick. <laughs> 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 but I asked them to do that because sometimes we're not present to our thoughts. You know, I do a lot. And I say this probably on every, anytime I've been interviewed, I mention this because I think it's so important. I did some research on when the pandemic hit, I went to work on this platform full time, you know, helping clients that were right in the middle of trying to navigate the pandemic. Mm. Relationships were, oh my gosh, you know, one of my top topics, you know, when I talk to each and every person, hundreds of people, you know, across the globe about this. The one thing that I found, I said, you know what, let me look and see what our brain is doing. I know what the Bible says. I know what you know, my, my textbooks say, I know what my education is about, you know, the power of positive thinking, blah, blah, blah. What is our brain actually doing? And so it led me to a research um, study that was done in Canada back in 2019. And it studied the human brain and how many thoughts we get per day. And we get up to 6,200 thoughts every single wow. day. Yeah, a lot of thoughts. That's everybody's mm-hmm. brain, right? And 85 to 95% of those thoughts are said to be negative and repetitive. Wow. So if you think about that, every single day, we're waking up, opening our eyes, you know, before we yawn, before we stretch or whatever, we're picking up those same thoughts from yesterday. So imagine if you are married, you're in a relationship, you're in a business partnership and something has gone wrong. How can you get over it if we know that the brain is constantly picking up those 85 to 95% of, neg- of our negative thinking? We've got to start shifting those thoughts, you know, and making sure it's like, okay, are my thoughts showing up in the past? Are they the present or the future? Past is things we cannot control, right? Mm-hmm. We can learn from them. We can grow. We can, you know, f- figure out a strategy. The present thoughts are the ones that's when we're, you know, we're towing the field. We're, you know, basically in the grind of things. So this is where we're troubleshooting and we're putting things in position to be able to move forward. Um, so a mistake was made, a problem was happening in the business, a problem happened in the relationship, forgive and let go, move to the present moment. Okay, what can I do right now today, this hour, this minute to improve my side of the relationship, my side of the business partnership? And what can I put into position to forgive them and to actually, you know, continue to move forward with them? And then the future is all about, you know, we'll what are we going to do next? Where do we see ourselves? Does the vision change because crisis happens? 
the vision for your marriage, the vision for the business, does that change because you've had a pit stop? Does that change because there's no money in the bank and you're negative now? Mm. Does that change because you've had, you made the wrong decision or you made a bad decision and now your partner's, your husband's coming home to nothing, you know, and that you've got to rebuild again? No, it shouldn't. It should not. No, it, it should, should not. not. But it does because we lose sight of that because what we're doing is we were thinking about the future in the present, you know, we're working and everything like that. Then all of a sudden a problem happens. And so we go backwards. Wow. Because those thoughts start, you know, they become our past thoughts. They become our past experiences. And then we stay stuck here. We can't even see, we can't get our way to the end because we we're still stuck. We went backwards. So it's so important. I said, what's the difference? I've asked myself this question. What's the difference from if we get that many thoughts, all of us? Mm -hmm. and the percentages are so high that they're negative, then what's the difference between someone that is being able to have more success in their life and be able to have more happier days? Because that's what we're after, right? Right, right. So the difference is, is they're basically choosing to think differently about what they're experiencing right now and what they've experienced in the past. Learning the lessons, growing from it, and moving forward is what it's all about. <laughs> See, you just started to unpack um, something right there. You definitely got to come back for a part two. Okay. I a part two and a part three. Cause I would love to. Let's I know my next it. question going to be a whole nother several pieces of luggage to unpack. Let's but unpack it. <laughs> listen, because I mean, you brought up some, uh, some amazing points here. How to, the importance of saying that, okay, if my relationship has problems, admitting the, the problem. Then beginning to work on the problem, yes, uh, preferably sort it out before you start the business. But if not, make sure you're prioritizing sorting it out while you're building the business. Absolutely. And then that, uh, the key to that is assertive communication. Yes, and, I, and I love the way that you broke down the differences between the passive communication, passive aggressive communication, because I think that a lot of people live in the passive aggressive communication. Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> Me too. So, <laughs> but then the assertive communication being the healthy space, right? Mm-hmm. And, and even as you were saying that, I'm thinking to myself, that requires so much emotional intelligence in order to be effective and even know that where I am in my communication skills, my communication style, am I passive? Am I passive aggressive? And how can I be assertive? And be comfortable with being in that space and being right. a subject. And then now, even to what, what you're unpacking with the forgiveness piece. So because the, the forgiveness is for me, not for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, give me the freedom that I need in order to continue to move forward and quit hitting that rewind button in my mind. Yes. That's a lot of thoughts, Nikki. That's a lot of thoughts. So many. And we are not having, living our best days. I have been on this, having this quote that I've been sharing with clients for the past two weeks. Sometimes God just gives me quotes, right? And it is quality over quantity. Always so worried and simple, right? And we've heard it. It's a cliche. But it's so profound that I've been using it on my sessions because we are so wrapped up in the quantity. How how long is it going to take? How long are we going to have? How long are we going to just be living the, our best life? How about quality? How about we slow it down and we mm. say, today, I'm going to make, I'm not going to worry about how many hours I have in this day. Mm-hmm. I'm going to worry about making today a quality day. I'm going to make sure that my experiences are happy. I'm going to make sure that I show love and share love in the way that I know that I'm supposed to. I'm going to make sure I'm going to reach out. Maybe you don't reach out. Maybe I'm just going to pray and uplift someone in my, my prayer life and my spiritual practices. Maybe I'm going to be more intentional. Yeah, I'm mad at my husband. Yeah, I'm mad at my business partner. Yeah, I'm you know mad at my friend. But maybe today I'm going to stretch myself. Mm. I'm going to make a quality day because I'm going to say, you know what? I know we're in a rough patch. I'm going to leave a note, a sticky note, a, a letter, a text, a, you know, call, whatever, FaceTime. And I'm going to say, you know, I know we're in a rough patch, but I just wanted to not lose sight of the fact that I love you no matter mm. what. And leave now, it. Now, see, that's a whole lot of growth and maturity right there. You talk about yeah. growth mindset on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it feels good sometimes because you may be right. Right. You may but, be upset and it may be valid, but that doesn't mean that you can hold that mm-hmm. and not be able to share with, you know, in that moment and say something positive to that person or something loving. Because we don't that, get these days back. We don't, we think that you, we do. You don't get that time back. Again, we're thinking of the qual- we're thinking of the quantity. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, it's I, tomorrow. I'll figure it out, and I'm gonna talk to him in a couple of days. I'm gonna give him the silent treatment for a little bit. 
not assertive communication. That's passive. Right. Mm. Passive. Mm. You are talking about you. You know, at that point, you're kind of holding things in. You're choosing to be passive by in an opposite way. Mm-hmm. Then, um, thinking about his wants and needs, you're just holding things in. Holding so, things. Yeah, that's a great segue into my last question. It's like a two part question, right? Because we're talking about relationships. Okay. So last night, I was went out for. Um, conversation with a, with one of my friends when I have a conversation so we went to have some hors d'oeuvres and just talk you know girl talking right. she actually said hey how can because me and my husband had coached her and her husband before right and okay. she's like how can you I remember you saying that you and Ben are able to still be intimate even if you are angry with each other and she's been married maybe 18 months and I laugh because that didn't happen in 18 months. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what is this? <laughs> no. <laughs> she was like, what is this madness? And how did you do that? And, <laughs> and I, I had to laugh. But even with what you were saying, with leaving the sticky notes and still being intentional. Um, and yeah, I'm mad at you. I'm big mad <laughs> at you right now. Big mad. And I don't know how long it's going to take me to process through this. But I love you, and I just need you to know that. But yeah, I'm being mad. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, because intimacy and sex are, are a vital part of a relationship. And how can we, and it's also a part of communication. So, mm-hmm. how can we make sure that we don't skimp on the intimacy and that we don't skimp on um, sex? In the relationship, why, whether we're angry with each other, whether we're in a good, re- healthy relationship, um, not healthy relationship, building business, how can we make that a priority and can continue to keep that communication flowing as it relates to expressing, hey, I need this from you right now. And understanding that there's a difference between intimacy and sex, but they kind of go together sometimes. Right. Right. They do. And that's real talk. Now, I'll start by saying I always tell clients that I work with and anybody, you still have the choice, right? You have mm-hmm. the choice to withhold, you have the choice to, to not engage, even in the times where you guys may be going through a rough time. So I would never tell a person you have to, you need to, you must still come together and connect. I would say that it would be the best practice to do that. But even with best practices, we don't always do. Right. So it's, you know, every relationship is different. But I will say when you are dating someone, when you're you know, married to someone, whether it's many years or just a few years, you have to do. I love the five love languages quiz. I absolutely love it because you need to know what your partner, the way that your partner wants to receive love so that you can show up in that way. Now, once you know that, then if you say, oh, I'm not going to do that. I know he loves words of affirmation. He loves when I say positive things, but I'm going to choose to tear him down anytime I get a chance to, anytime he makes a mistake or I'm going to tell him, you know, he's not good enough every day, then you have to ask yourself, why am I in this relationship? You know, what, what is the point? Because I said that I want to come together with someone and love them no matter what, but I'm also choosing not to love them the way that they need to or want to be loved. There's physical touch that's and love language that sometimes depending on who the person is, that may be at the top of the list and it may be an overpowering percentage. When they do that quiz, which takes about five, 10 minutes, it may be, shoot, 50%, you know, physical touch. So when you are, maybe it's physical touch and words of affirmation. So they need someone that's going to say positive things to them. It helps them feel love. They want somebody that's touching them, which a lot of times is sexual intimacy. Okay. So you guys have a problem, you're at a pit stop, at a roadblock in your relationship, and you withhold and say, you know what, I'm not going to, no, I'm mad, and I'm going to be mad, and I don't know when I'm going to stop being mad, I'll let you know. (laughs) And this person is over here saying, but I know we're going through this, but I need to feel loved no matter what in this situation, so I do want to still be intimate with you, and I still want to be able to hear you say you love me, you care, and you think I'm amazing still. And so... And then that's where a lot of times problems happen in the relationship Mm -hmm. and division comes, you know, Mm -hmm. and you have enough of those episodes and there's series of days, you know, sometimes women and men feel, you know, play that silent treatment game. And those days, as we know what the brain is doing, right, it's recalling these negative things. And then Susie, Sally, Leroy, you know, (laughs) 
you know, Johnny, whoever, you know, start talking, you know, yes. and they have saying the right thing at the right time. What, and, what's you know the what song of the cleanup woman? She come visit your house and she not there to clean yeah. up. <laughs> Right. You gotta mess up some stuff. Okay? Yeah, right. <laughs> Being on the outside, but messed up everywhere else, you know. But <laughs> I would say you have to almost put some of that on, and and if you want to, as a best practice, um, still be intimate. You put some of that that you're holding against the person, or that you're upset or angry about, on the shelf for just that time period. Because you never know. Once that intimate experience happens, then it may make things not look as bad. <laughs> may be like, okay, I love you still, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's figure it out. You know, it may be that one thing that can reconnect you all and cause you guys to get back to why you're in this relationship in the first place, because you love each other. You know, the intimacy that you had in the beginning connected you to, bonded you in a way. So, you know, that's not what you want to let go of when crisis happens, when problems occur. You know, you want to try to stay as connected as you can so that other distractions don't come in between you and your spouse, you and your partner. You want to make sure that you keep that as solid as you can. And sometimes that does require sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I say assertive communication in the bedroom. You know, sometimes you may not feel 100% and that's okay. But if you feel like you don't want to be there, you can't be present because of health reasons or anything like that. I would never say stretch yourself in that area if it's a health issue. But if it's a grudge issue, then you probably want to kind of mature in that area and stretch yourself by having a pep talk, you know, whatever you got to do. <laughs> Put on some meditation music. <laughs> Favorite love songs, you know, go in the bathroom, kind of get yourself together, spray some perfume, <laughs> alone. You know, before you're going in a the game, they're up there and they're in the, <laughs> in the locker room. They're like, yeah, we can do it. We got this, you know. <laughs> Whatever you can do, you know, just to be present. But at the end of the day, I would say, don't forget, I'll go back to what I said earlier, don't forget to remember constantly, consistently what connected you to in the first place, what, you know, what the attraction was, why did they come into your life at this time? Why are you with them? And, um, and just love them the way that you know that they want to need. If a person is upset with you and they're trying to reach out and, you know, still be intimate with you, then they, it, it's probably, you know, something that they feel that you guys can get through. Mm-hmm. They want they want that to be a way, a segue into, um, you know, maybe starting a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't have enough time on this podcast. That's why you got to come back. Because, yeah, I got some stuff to say. <laughs> <laughs> but good stuff, good stuff. Because I definitely understand, understand what you were saying. I was too tickled. When you were speaking, I thought about, a passage from a book I read years ago, and it's called Love and Respect by Emerson Egret. Okay. And in, in the book, a husband and wife came together to write the book. And in the wife's portion of the book, and what we were talking about, she was talking about what we're talking about now, how to maintain intimacy in a sexual relationship when you mad. <laughs> when you big mad. <laughs> and she said she was having, there was an argument going on and she was, I can't remember if it was her mother or her mother-in-law, but it was one of them. And the mom said, I don't understand why you in such a tizzy over something that takes so little time. Mm-hmm. Girl, I hollered. <laughs> like, is she <laughs> Wow. It's like that just says a whole lot about what was going on in my bedroom. But bringing it all into perspective, it's about reframing your thoughts, is basically what the mother was trying to say. Like, (laughs) reframe your thoughts for this, yeah, for this moment in time. And you will be amazed at how it does open up that partner to have a productive conversation about whatever it is that you guys are upset and angry about. I know when my husband and I were younger and our marriage was a lot younger, one of the reasons that I would withhold intimacy outside of because I felt empowered to, let's just be honest. All right. Like I felt empowered to do that, to get my way. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I was annoyed by his response. Like, why we can't just have this conversation without having sex? But then after we have sex, you want to be chatting. No, I'm mad on a whole nother level. Now, I don't talk. So I had to grow in my thought process and just, you know, 
for me, for in this house, that is the easiest way to have a great conversation, mm-hmm. a, a real conversation, an authentic conversation where he can actually express to me the thoughts that are on his mind. Would it require for me because of my personality and who I am? I had to reframe my thoughts on the process. Right. It seems like it's something that's so hard to do, but in actuality, when I finally did get to the place where I could do that, mm-hmm. it's not that hard. It's not. And that's why compromise, you know, mm-hmm. compromise has to come into play on a consistent basis in your relationship. So compromise, what is that? That means that I may not want to. I may mm-hmm. be still upset. I'm hurt. I'm sad. I'm whatever. I'm tired. But I'm going to compromise on this because I know it's for the betterment of our relationship. It's mm-hmm. for the sustainability of our relationship. So I'm going to stretch myself and I'm mm-hmm. going to do what I need to do to be present. And there's another piece of that, which we probably have to go on, a, you know, another <laughs> Again, it's like, you know, showing up, not mad, because sometimes that energy, even okay. within the bedroom, you commit to doing it, but then mm-hmm. you're not really, you know. You're not present. You're, you're not making present. the grocery list, you know. Mm-hmm. You're doing right. something else in your mind. Right, right. <laughs> and they know it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's just a maturity thing. It's, mm-hmm. it's, you know, looking at the big picture, you know, this is about us staying together. This is about mm-hmm. us loving each other. This is about me loving you in a way that I know your love language is. And mm-hmm. I'm okay with that because I know it's going to come full circle that I will get it on, you know, at some point in a positive way. You know, I'll reap the harvest of me mm-hmm. sacrificing now. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Being in a relationship is a beautiful thing. Being in a business partnership is a beautiful thing, but it's not, nothing's easy. You know, mm-hmm. and sometimes it is a give and take, you know, it is an ebb and flow. It is compromise. It is being selfless. And, um, you know, those that are able to get past those seasons of, you know, the defining moments or, you know, <laughs> make it or break it moment, you yeah. know, I much respect because you, you know, it, it's a mindset. It really is. And it's a continuous daily practice of changing your thoughts and making sure that you're looking at, at your partner with a compassionate lens, forgiving and loving each other. Because if you forgave your partner for whatever's going on in the relationship when it comes down to intimacy right before mm-hmm. then, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be a problem. Exactly. You know? You're holding on to something. You're not letting mm-hmm. go of something prior to. Mm-hmm. So is that okay? You know, is that going to work? I mean, how long is that going to work right. for your relationship? You know, right. because if you do it, you know, it's fine when they're doing it. But if you do it on your end, then all of a sudden, oh no, but you won't forgive me. You won't let it go. You know, no. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) we got to exercise the grace that we expect. Absolutely. We have to exercise the grace that we expect. And, you know, oh, right there. (laughs) Right. Right. Like, you know, and and understanding. I I like the disclaimer that you put out there, you know, in there as we're talking about the necessities of intimacy and sex within the relationship. Of course, we understand that there are going to be some there's always some outliers where just that's not feasible. Like right. whether it's health benefits, uh, whether it's health conditions or that you're in a toxic and unhealthy relationship. So yeah. this conversation is, is being framed around a healthy relationships. Healthy relationships do have bumps and bruises and they have little sore spots and moments, but overall the relationship is healthy. And these are just some tips and tools we're talking about in order to help uh, get through those rough patches, you know? to be able to move forward. So you, you got to first, as Nikki was identifying, in the, even in the beginning of the conversation, what type of relationship do you have right now? Are you seeking out the help of a qualified individual, whether it's a coach or a therapist to help heal that relationship or to determine if that relationship is salvageable? Right. right. So there's some trauma that happens, you know, prior to a relationship coming together. And then sometimes there's some trauma that happens in the relationship. So I love that you said that. And, you know, I will definitely piggyback on that, that you have to make sure that if you make that choice to be with that person, that you are fully aware of any trauma that they've experienced or that you guys have experienced together. Mm-hmm. Connect with someone that can help you through that um, so that you can show up in an intimate space and both feel confident and forget and let go. Um, and just love each other the way that you need to and, and deserve to be loved, really. You know, because if you can't love your person now outside of the sex and intimacy, if you cannot mm-hmm. love them the way that they need and want to be loved, then you're doing them a disservice by wasting, not wasting their time, but you're keeping them from somebody that could, that you know, actually do that. And then also, if they chose not to be with anybody else, 
they could choose to love themselves enough to be mm-hmm. able to, um, you know, not even necessarily need that from another person. So, you know, it's just being honest and that, you know, I keep going back to communication. It's like, it's so important to have that open door and safe space to be able to, to communicate with each other how you feel. And I'll say one more thing is just check in, having check ins with one another. Um, you know, how am I doing? You know, it's been a while since we've, we've talked about things. Is there anything that you see that I need to change or improve on? You know, mm-hmm. that other person has to be understanding that that's not going to happen overnight. Right. But at least they're, they're asking the question and they're willing to, you know, at least think about some things they can do to become a better person in that relationship. So those check-ins, I say, are once a week. That's what I tell my clients for your relationship. Check in. How am I doing? You know, and, and have that conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that check-in. Uh, me and my husband, we, the, our, our state words, if you will, uh, mm-hmm. uh, is, have you been reading the book? Now, there is like no book. That's our safe space to say, look, no, nah. <laughs> something that you have done or haven't been doing right now, I don't like it. And it's okay. not going to lead to where you want to go. So that's our safe <laughs> phrase instead of because it makes you it's not it cannot be perceived as an attack on right. anything. So that's our safe word. So one of us says that, then, you know, OK, let me let me go through the Rolodex in my mind and see, you know. Where can we do, where can I do better? Or right. what is it like? And it sets up for a great conversation. So I really love that you said that. And it's a weekly check-in. Like, don't just do it yeah. every six months because you can be real broken by the end. Right. Well, in my goal, and I feel like God has purposed me to do this, you know, all these relationships that are on the rocks or, you know, maybe in the middle of the relationship, beginning of the relationship, I choose to show up in this space, working with clients and, you know, on, in this area because I want relationships to make it. Mm-hmm. You know, I know how to make it at least 20 years. So, <laughs> <laughs> so but even beyond that, you know, mm-hmm. I want to be able to have, give them the tools and just things that I, you know, research and things that I have in my, you know, tool, toolbox, so to speak. I want to be able to provide that for clients to be able to move forward because this, I mean, we need, people like you, you know, be able to, um, you know, continue to maintain relationships and, and do the things that you and your husband do to help the world, you know, so um, why not? Why not pour into individuals in that area? Amen. That is that is awesome. So, Nikki, please tell the Toolbox audience how they can connect with you and what do you have coming up that we need to be a part of? Okay, so they can connect with me. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook too, but my primarily I love Instagram because it's quick. I can do it and then it feeds to other areas. But <laughs> they can find me at Nikki, N-I-K-K-I dot or period speaks, S-P-E-A-K-S. And then also, you know, follow me and all of that. Like, subscribe, comment, do all those wonderful things. And then I'm on YouTube also. Same thing, Nikki Speaks. And then my um, web address is Nikki Speaks Therapy. Dot com. So N I K K I and then speaks with an S and then therapy.com. And then as far as what I have going on, I'm in the process of coming up with some courses and some workshops on relationships. So until then though, I want them to just go ahead and reach out to me because I'm I'm you know starting to get all of my email addresses and my clients and all of that together um, in order to launch that here soon. And but until then, I do want to work with people individually and couples. You know, I'm taking any I'm open for not individual therapy, not counseling. But I'm open for couple coaching at this yeah. point. So if you are a couple that is getting ready to get married, that's currently married and kind of going through some things, or maybe you're in the middle of a divorce or coming out of the relationship completely, then reach out to me. I would love to work with you and your partner. And um, and we can we can make this thing last forever. It's keep sweating. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I might yeah. drop that as the trailer music at the end of this. Yeah, episode, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> See if we can get permission to do that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. It lasts awesome. forever. <laughs> yes. Listen, Nikki, it has been such a pleasure having you on the podcast today. And we definitely are gonna have to connect for a part two and part three because that communication piece just needs to be an episode to itself and intimacy and uh sex absolutely has to be an episode in and of itself. And and I'll and I'll go ahead and say this, especially for those of us um within the body of Christ, because we have so many taboos around that or erroneous belief systems that don't align up with scripture. Mm-mm. But and we find ourselves in unhappy marriages or divorce 
and we're Christians. Like, how does that work? It yeah. should not work like that. And so I would love for us to be able to dive into some deeper conversations about that. Um, yeah. and, and so that we can maintain healthy relationships in the body of Christ. Oh, yeah, for sure. I always say give yourself permission to do something that maybe you've never seen before. You have to believe in what you've never seen. Yeah. Sometimes that, that requires you to still stay true to, to God's word and to your belief system, but also give yourself permission to just be you. You know, mm-hmm. we are, we're intimate beings, period. Mm-hmm. You know, period. And sometimes we don't give ourselves permission to just be that in a safe, healthy relationship with our partner because of all the hangups and, mm-hmm. and, you know, misconceptions from our past. So, so yeah, that's, that sounds fun. I love it. <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> I definitely, definitely, definitely. We're going to, we're going to bring that. We're going to bring that together because to me, that's a that's a vital part of personal growth and development as well as personal growth and development. Because if stuff is not right at home, it's real hard to focus on what you're doing um, in your corporate career or as a business owner. Like it, it right. takes away your focus. But if things are great at home, mm-hmm. then you can show up the way you need to show up right. in, in a right. healthy way uh, at work. So listen. Thanks so much again. I appreciate you for coming on, guys. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Listen, guys, this has been another amazing episode of Laquita's Toolbox Live. I hope that you all have enjoyed this episode as much as I have. Look in the show notes and we'll have all of Nikki's relevant contact information in the show notes. And also, if this is your first time having tuned into the podcast, hit that follow button, consider subscribing to us and and leave us some comments in the comments section on your favorite podcast listening platform. I'd like to hear from you. Let me know what you think about the content that we've been sharing, if you like it or if you hate it. If you hate it, tell me why you hate it and what we can do to change it. If you love it, tell me what you love about it and what you want to hear more of. But important, we want to hear from you. So please consider like, share, and subscribing to this podcast and also get in the comment section and leave us a review so that we can learn what we need to learn um, in order to grow as a podcast and bring the content that our listeners want to hear. Until next time, I'm your host, Laquita Monley. You guys be blessed and have a great day. Mm-hmm.